What's up scavengers, Anskandinavia here, and today we're making a beautiful and simple light bulb vivarium. But before that, I just want to say how thankful I am for 1000 subscribers. Well, it is just easier if I show you. <laughs> Alright, all jacks aside, I'm so glad that we hit 1000, and it has gone so much faster than I ever could have imagined. Hope you enjoy my videos as much as I enjoy making them, and that I inspire you in my builds and updates. Well, enough talking and let's get into the video. To start, you will need the following. A glass light bulb. This one was actually hand blown and bought from a local flower shop. However, you can use the same method for any small glass containers. Next up, some meshing. You will need to have a mesh to separate the substrate, aka the dirt, from the drainage layer. Here is an example of, in my opinion, a much better and stronger mesh, however I will never be able to fit that through this tiny hole. So I'm going for this much finer and softer mesh. You will of course need scissors to cut the mesh. You will also need a dirt mix. So this mix consists of my vivarium dirt plus some sand. If you are going with normal plants, you don't really want to mix in any java or peat moss in the dirt mix since you are using it in a really small glass container and having dead moss mixed in with the dirt would look ridiculous since the moss would be far too airy and stick out of the dirt however if you're going for a larger glass container go for the moss to retain humidity you will also need a drainage layer in this case i am using sand however this is not the optimal solution and i would recommend gravel you will of course need some plants I would recommend taking some native and wild weeds because they are hardy plants and they don't really grow that large usually. I am also going to use some hardscape. This is optional, but I went with some tiny leaves and a stick. You will need some tweezers to plant everything and move it all around. And you're all set. First, I start with filling the container with some sand as the drainage layer. And I will use a paper funnel to spill as little as possible. Because this vivarium is so small, I did not have access to appropriate sized gravel at the time. Therefore I used sand, which will get the job done. A drainage layer is needed, since you don't want the water to stay in the soil and make the plant roots rot. And especially for me, since I am going to use dry loving succulents. Next up, preparing the mesh. The meshing is needed for the drainage layer to not get mixed in with the dirt, and for the roots to not reach down to the drainage layer. Meshing done. Now let's add the substrate for the plants. As I did earlier, I'm using a funnel for this too. Just a bit hard to get it all down. Now for the planting. I know you should do the hardscape first, however then it would have been so hard to plant without destroying the leaves and so on. And in this case it doesn't really matter. My tweezers was a bit too short for this work, so I went and got another longer one. But I gotta tell you, maneuvering and modeling in such a small gap was super hard. But well, I love challenges, so it was pretty fun. Then I added the hardscape, aka two leaves and one stick. I made a quick stand for it by bending some metal wire and added some sand on the top to make it look better. And you're pretty much set. However, notice that this vivarium is not an eternal vivarium, because it is not sealed. However, if you want to make an eternal vivarium, aka creating a closed small ecosystem, you only need to water it once, add the cleanup crew, such as springtails, and then close it with some sort of lid. I did not really want to do this, because I have succulents in there, and they don't want it moist. Therefore, I did not want to risk drowning them, and I let the top be open for water to evaporate. Also, I've had bad experiences with eternal vivariums. So I went with one setup that I was familiar with. Also, watering it once a week is not really a problem. And by the way, I might actually put a queen ant inside later in spring and of course add some cleanup crew and then seal it to make it an eternal vivarium. Make sure not to miss that. I mean this is an awesome desk prop and it looks really cool in my opinion. What do you guys think? Will you make a similar small vivarium? Or maybe you will make the close eternal vivarium version? Please tell me in the comments. Now, I have been getting a lot of questions on where I live, and to answer all of you wondering, I live in Stockholm, in Sweden. So if you also live in Stockholm, why not DM me on my Instagram, ants underscore Scandinavia. And as a last side note, I just want to thank you guys one more time for the immense support I have been given on this channel. And I really love reading all of your comments, so please keep posting them. Also. In a few weeks there is a reptile expo in Stockholm, would you guys like to see a video about that? 
I know it's not and related, but I thought, hey, maybe you guys want that. Go ahead and vote here if you want a video from there. Until next time, see you around scavengers. Bye!